The Brussels bus company had a problem. It was costing them too much money to keep their fleet on the road. And they thought they knew what the problem was. Cowboy bus drivers. Not that they weren't safe, but they were just too aggressive, too hard on the gas, too harsh on the brakes, and it was causing their buses to break down faster than they should have done. And that cost money. They wanted to understand what steps can we take to lower the cost of maintaining our fleet. So they did some analysis to figure out, is it really cowboy bus drivers? Is that really the problem that we have? If we don't understand how decisions are made, if we can't influence how decisions are made, then we can do all the data and all the, use all the analysis in the world, but it's not really driving business impact. And that's what we want to make sure our clients are able to do. Decision intelligence is a business discipline of understanding how and why decisions are made and then seeking to improve them. A lot of organizations, they don't want to change. And if you don't want to change, why are you thinking about decision intelligence? Because the whole purpose of decision intelligence is to change. Some organizations really struggle to apply decision intelligence if they are incredibly successful. Everything I do just turns to gold. Why would I need to change? Everything I'm doing is working really well. So I think the fundamental starting point for decision intelligence is, am I willing to change? And what would make that change compelling for my organization? We asked people how they judge good decisions. And we gave them two choices. You can say a good outcome determines a good decision. Well, that worked out well, it must have been a good decision. That worked out badly, it must have been a bad decision. Or we said, was it the good decision one that was made with the best available information, the best available knowledge, and the right insights at that time? Was that a good decision, even if it turned out badly? 50% of people said a good decision is defined by its outcome, and 50% of people said a good decision is defined by its process. And I just love that dichotomy, um, because it means no matter what you think the answer is, there's literally a 50% chance the person you're talking to defines a good decision in a fundamentally different way than the way that you do. You have to take the view that a good decision is one that was defined by a good process with good inputs, because you can control that in a way that you can't control the outcome. This is the really important thing about the Brussels bus company example. They went in with a hypothesis. It's cowboy drivers. But when they looked at the data and they found out, actually, it isn't cowboy drivers. It was the terrain and geography of the city that was wearing out the buses faster in some parts than in other parts. Nothing to do with the drivers. It was the city itself. By understanding that it was where the bus was running that was the problem, not the driver of the bus, they were able to make sure that the buses were wearing out evenly, and that meant that they were able to do a better job of maintaining them and keeping them productive and on the road. The thing that I think is so special about the Brussels Bus Company is they were honest enough to take a step back and say, well, what is? And they pivoted to take action and use that new data, that new insight for a better decision. The biggest thing to be successful with applying decision intelligence is to have a willingness to change. Change is painful. There's a couple of things to do to really get better at the way you make decisions as an organization. The first thing is you need to track the outcomes of your decisions. And everyone says, well, we, we always track the outcomes of our decisions. But actually, we don't. We have survey data that says that fewer than 20% of organizations actually consistently track the outcomes of the decisions they make and fewer than 20% of organizations actually use the right metrics to track the outcomes of the decisions. So when you look at it holistically, about 10% of organizations consistently track the outcomes of their decisions and actually do that in an effective, meaningful way. So you know, how can you possibly improve the quality of your decision making if you have no way of tracking whether or not the decisions you make are actually good decisions or bad decisions? The second one I would really focus in is understanding how the decision is made today, right? Is this decision made using data and analysis? Is it made by getting a group of smart people together and saying, you guys figure it out, you guys make a decision? Is it by applying business principles or ethics? Is it made with instinct or is it made on principle? We need to understand this in order to improve it. Decision intelligence is a universal concept but the way it manifests is gonna be variable depending on the culture of the organization, the needs of that organization, and the dynamics of their industry.